Welcome to Signs and Wonders. I'm Tom Hollis. Don Black is off today. But falling in love with Jesus is the best thing you can do. Thank you, Pastor Myra Bell, for that song. And uh, I'm here with Pastor Gary Mitrick. Good to have you again, Thank Pastor. You. And Pastor J. Anthony Gilbert. Let me just say, uh, this is going to sound so simple, <laughs> simple-minded, I think. If I say the, the name Jesus to you, just what comes into your mind, Pastor Gary? Well, He's the love of my life. He's my savior and he's my Lord. You know, it's interesting how we talk about falling in love with Jesus because I think men sometimes have a, maybe a more difficult or harder time getting intimate or thinking about being intimate with God. Yeah. But God's a spirit. He's really not a male or a female, right. he's a spirit. Mm -hmm. But he does desire intimacy with all of us. And he's actually created an ability in us to be able to draw near to him and to have a, an intimate relationship with him. And, and with intimacy is so misunderstood in, in society today. And, and, and in many ways, when you say the word intimacy, people automatically think sexual intimacy. It's kind of how it's right. used a lot popularly. But we're talking about a relationship, uh, intimacy of a child and a father, intimacy of a mother and a child, intimacy of uh, just of a closeness. Pastor Jay, if I say Jesus to you, what are those things that just automatically come to mind? Well, you know, it's funny. As you, I'm glad you went to him first because I had to kind of think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, I mean, there's so many things you can say. I know. You know, there's That's so the many problem, things you can say. I mean, yeah. I'm like, you say Jesus, I'm like, come on, Tom, what kind of question is that? It's like, you know, so big of a, of a subject. Yeah, anyway. you know, and I was thinking about just how he's everything to me. But the thing that came to my mind, I wish I could give him more. You know, sometimes he's done so much for me. He's been so good to me. And, you know, and not that it's by works. I understand all that, but I just wish sometimes I was better for him. And I just wish sometimes I'd give him a little bit more of myself. I, I hope that I'm a little bit more compliant today than the day before, but he's everything to me. Well, we've been I just, praying for you to be better for him, <laughs> Pastor Jay. Lord, help I Pastor Jay to be 888 better. 888-665, man, I'm calling it. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it is, uh, it's, it seems simple, right? That we want to talk about Jesus, but that's what we're here for. That's why this ministry exists, is to talk about Jesus, and not just to talk about Jesus, because Jesus isn't some subject, it's not, it's some study that we do. Jesus is living. The Word of God, and He's called the Word of God, is living and active. And He's active in our lives and He's active hopefully in your life as well. And today we want to see an active situation of Christ in your life, of Jesus moving in your life in a way maybe that He's never done before. Uh, we all as Pastor Jay said, we all need to offer ourselves. It talks about presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. And that's, a, that's, that's hard because we want our own way. We want to do our own things. And there's always more and more that we can give to Him. And so uh, what is it today? What is the Lord asking of you today? We're going to ask a lot of the Lord today. And we're going to believe a lot for you. But what is He asking you to do? And what is He asking you to give? that you might be of service to the King of Kings. Well, we want to pray about all those things. And we've got prayer partners standing by. Uh, Pastor Gary, there's nothing like having another person you can pray with and agree with. That's right. So the number is available. I'm going to be sharing from the Word very shortly. But even if you are dealing with something in your family, in your health, in your job or business, that is on your heart today, why don't you pick up that phone, 888-665-4483. It's kind of a way that we release our faith. When you dial that number and you connect with someone, they will pray with you and get you connected with God. And, and we do, we serve a God that hears and answers our prayers. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, we're believing today 
for you to have uh, th an opportunity to pray with a prayer partner. Uh, we're going to uh, hear a wonderful word, and we're going to have that opportunity to take communion as well later in the program. And, and Pastor Jay, can we just speak to communion? And why, why would we do that on a program like this? What, what, what are we hoping to see from God when we take communion? Well, it's just a time to come together with him. And he says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So my, my thing that I like to say about communion, it's an opportunity to come back to the table of God that's been prepared and just remember what he accomplished for us at, through his death. Yeah. And as a result, we have benefits that we receive. And so it's a constant reminder of those benefits that he purchased for us. And so we want you to get some, some bread and some juice and be ready for a little bit later when we have communion. But we just want to take this time to say, the lines are open. And you know what? It's not just the telephone lines to, to our prayer partners. They're always open. You can always call 24 7 and get a hold of somebody and pray with you. And the number's there on your screen 888 665 4483. But it's more than that. The, the Bible talks about the, that we can come boldly That's into right. the throne right. room of the Lord and we can, through Jesus Christ, present our requests to Him. And so why hold back? Uh, why t take any, any longer? Why carry those yourself? Y you have the opportunity now, the doors are wide open for the, to go into the throne room of God, to believe uh, for, for great things to happen. We want that to be part of what happens to you on this program today. You know, when, when Jesus hung on the cross and he said, it is on, finished, that's what we're remembering. I like to say what he basically said was it's paid in full. Amen. Right. Amen. Everything he accomplished, dying for our sins, taking our sicknesses and diseases, healing us of our hurts, healing our broken heart, it's paid Amen. in full. Paid in full. All you have to do is receive it. And that's what we do when we come to the communion table. We remember all that the Lord accomplished and then we assure ourselves that it is finished. Amen. It's paid in full and we receive it by faith. Amen. And we couldn't pay that. We, we had no way of paying that. It is only through Christ. That it, can be, that it can be paid. So we've got a lot of wonderful things we're gonna do in just a little bit. Pastor Gary's gonna share the word. Uh, when we come back from a short break, uh, Pastor Myra will, will be bringing us into worship again. And, and again, we're gonna have communion a little later, so be sure to get those elements together. Right now, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back after this. Hello, Cornerstone family. It's so good to be with you. I'm Brian Bush here standing outside the old city walls of Jerusalem on an absolutely beautiful day. Friends, I want to see you here in my home. I want to invite you to the Holy Land in October. Please, your first step to the Holy Land is to get our brochure that we've prepared for you to illustrate to you where we're going to take you. You know, the weather in October is going to be much similar to as it is now. Short sleeve shirt, light jacket at night, really comfortable. It's a great time of year to visit here in the Holy Land. It's going to be an incredible tour and it will change your life. I know it will because the Bible will come alive. And it's so wonderful that we're going to be looking at prophecy, both past, present and in the future. Friends, it's going to be fantastic.
Amen. God enjoys our worship. The Bible says that's where he lives. He dwells in the praises of his people. If you're needing to sense God's presence today, why don't you just open your heart, your spirit, open your mouth and just worship him. Worship him. And I know that is the greatest way we can put out the welcome mat for the Holy Spirit, the Lord, to come and tabernacle with us, permeate the very atmosphere wherever we are. I want to share with you out of the epistle of James, chapter 5, starting there in verse 13, James says this, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick. The Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed any sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your faults or your trespasses to one another. Pray for one another yes. that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of righteous men and women avail much. Amen. Wow. The Lord couldn't spell it out any clearer than that through this passage in James' epistle. Are you sick today? Call. <laughs> well, that's what we ask you to do all the time. <laughs> I don't think James was talking about a telephone, <laughs> but we're talking about reaching out through your phone, your cell phone, your house phone, and calling and letting your request be made known unto God. You know, we often talk about how God takes the foolish things of this world and confounds the wise. I mean, laying hands on somebody, yes, yes, yes. taking oil mm -hmm. and anointing someone in the natural, that doesn't make any sense. That's right, that's right. But all it is is a point of contact. Mm -hmm. Because you see, faith is actually unseen to the natural eye even though faith is the substance of things hoped for so God will often give us things like oil mm -hmm. like the laying on of hands to help us to visualize mm -hmm. or to help us to conceptualize the connection we are making with him in the spirit. Amen. When you read in Acts chapter 19, the Bible says God wrought special, unusual miracles by the hands of Paul that they brought to him handkerchiefs. Yes. That word handkerchief literally is a sweat rag. It's probably a bandana, kind of a rag he put around his forehead when he was working, and an apron. Well, we all know what an apron is. It's just a common garment worn when you're doing kitchen work. There's nothing special about a handkerchief, nothing special about an apron, but as Paul laid his hands on those things, 
and sent them out and they were received and touched and contact was made with the people that received them, they were healed and delivered. Wow, think about that. Is any sick today? Are you sick in your body? Why don't you call? We're going to pray. Mm -hmm. We like to bring the prayer requests after the prayer partner has prayed over them, kind of create an altar up here, lay our hands on them as a point of contact and pray. And I like what, Paul, what James says in that passage, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. It's praying and believing. It's praying and then releasing our faith, not, you know, in the oil, in even the person that's laying their hand on you or the person that's on the other end of that telephone, but it's releasing our faith in the living God that he loves you, he cares about you and he wants you well. He wants you healed. John says in 3 John 2, I wish, I pray above all things that you would prosper and that you would be in health. That's God's will for all of our lives. But if you're not in health, why don't you call to be healed? Someone will pray with you. The prayer, I, I love to say this, agreement is the place of power. Agreement is the place of power. When two of us agree as touching anything, the limitations are off. We can have it. And then James concludes and says, and if you've committed any sins, because sometimes if there's sin in our life, it can block a healing. It can block a prayer from being answered. But then he says the effectual, fervent. I like that. I want to pray with some on, fervency. Amen. I want to pray with some fire and passion. You know, when we're praying for healing, we don't have to say, Lord, if it be your will, we know what his will is. His will is in his word. And we can pray boldly. We can pray effectually. We can pray passionately and with fervency and say, oh Lord, thank you for driving sickness out, cleansing us of all sin, healing us, setting captives free. Yes, yes. If that's you today, if you need healed in your body, if you need delivered today of any bondage, any addiction, if you need sin broken and cleansed from your life, God wants to break the chains off of you that are holding you captive today. You have to call. You have to reach out. You have to take that first step. Don't hold back. Call that number, 888-665-4483. The effectual, fervent prayers of righteous men and women. Oh, do they make a difference. Amen. You know, I, I love that passage, you know, and James being the book of faith and how he really just gives action steps. He says, if you're sick, call. He said, even if you're happy, he even told you what to do if you're happy. He said, I don't, I, you know, I kind of wonder why did he put that in there, you know, because all the other ones are like issues. But he said, if somebody's married, this is what you do with that. And so no matter what your need is, there's action steps in there. And I believe today is a day that you need to activate. God is moving, he wants to heal. 
He wants to deliver. He wants to bless. And there's some of you that may just need to praise God right where you are. You're merry, you're happy, you're joyful. He said, sing psalms. That's what you do when joy is in your spirit. I love, I love Pastor Gary when he preaches because he, he gets wired up. And I'm a wired up guy too. Because that's what's in him. And he's showing us how to activate those things. So it's so important today that people activate their faith. Well, it is important. And I love the, the thing about sing songs. We used to have the call the song line. You know, we call the praise line because God wants to answer the prayers to turn our prayer request into praise Amen. and that's to see good. the answer come. And so that's what we're believing for, for you when you call. And you know, there's a, there's a few things, uh, Pastor Gary, in that, in that passage that always strikes me. It's like, confess your faults to one another. Well, that's not a normal thing that we would do, but pray for one another that you might be healed. So that's when right. we're willing to do that, we become vulnerable to one another. And the prayer line is actually a good place to do that. I hope people have a, a church where they can do that as well. But call on the prayer line and just say, you know, I'm struggling with this. That's a place of, of uh, dependency on God that then he can rush in and answer. Well, I think one of the mistakes that we can all make is thinking we can handle our challenges, our issues, our problems all by ourselves. And sometimes we're embarrassed. Sometimes we hide things because we don't want other people to know about them. We, we, we don't want things to be made public. But you know, when you, when you stay isolated, Proverbs 18 says, you've made a big mistake. The Lord wants us in fellowship. The Lord wants us to be open. The Lord wants us to confess our faults to one another. We, we all need accountability in our life. Right. You, maybe you don't have to share your business with just everybody and anybody, but we all need somebody in our lives that loves us enough that if we're open and honest with them, they're not going to judge us. Right. They're not going right. to be critical. They're going to pray for us. That's right. That's right. And God honors faith. He honors faith. If you would just have faith in him, it's not just prayer alone or it's not just hoping. It's faith Come that on. God honors. And there are some people who in their spirits kind of sit back and say, okay, let's see what you're going to do, God, yeah. in a defense mode. Like, okay, well, God, let's see what you're going to do. No, no, no. It takes your faith to move God. If you look in scripture, you'll see how many people press their way to Jesus to get healed. They moved, they traveled, they did whatever they could. This is not one-sided that God just throws out. This is according to your faith. And God is just waiting for people to well, there's a, there's a desperation that's a component of faith. And those people, the, the woman that with the issue of blood that reached forward, there was a desperation in her to, to, uh, to take a step of faith. And, and so maybe you're desperate today. Maybe you, you, you know, desperation by itself isn't faith, but desperation reaching out to God is faith. And so get a hold of that prayer partner and say, I'm desperate for God to do something I need. And you know, one thing that I love about faith is Jesus said, we only need a mustard seed size. That's a tiny little, little bit, you know, because it's not in the power of our faith. It's in the power of our God. God's got that power. And all he says is come in faith. You have a little bit of faith. Open that door for me to, to work in your life. And just that little bit of faith, that makes all the difference because God is a great God. Amen. And that number's up on your screen for you to take that step. So right now, 888-665-4483. Why don't you call in right now and let a prayer partner touch and agree with you. Activate that faith. You may have never called into a prayer line before, but this today is a new day and it's a new opportunity. You know, Pastor Gary, when we step out and we do something we've never done, we're going to get something we've never That's had. That's right. And like you said, I, I like James because he's very practical. He's down to earth. He says faith, which we all need, but without works, it's incomplete, it's dead. So you gotta do something. Even the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are the working of miracles. Hey, we all want a miracle, but sometimes you have to do something that causes that miracle to manifest in your life. The Lord told the lepers, Go show yourself to the priests. The Lord said to the man, you know, go wash in the pool. 
to the man whose arm was lame. Take it out and stretch it out. That's faith. But it's added with works. Someone said faith is spelled R-I-S-K. Sometimes you just got to get out of the boat and take a risk. And maybe you're sitting there in your comfort zone right now, and we're kind of trying to get you out of your comfort zone. Don't get uncomfortable. Rise up to the challenge. Because you know what? It might make the difference between them getting their healing and their miracle or not. And what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by taking a step of faith? By picking up that phone, you have nothing to lose but your sickness. You have nothing to lose but a bad marriage that God can make better. You have nothing to lose but seeing whatever it is that's in your life that's out of order, watching God put it in order. So today, take that step. Come on, pick up that phone, 888-665-4483. Let the Holy Spirit begin to move. You're feeling that unction within your heart. Activate that. You know, many times, Pastor Mario, when people take a step, God only gives them the first little piece. Yes. And after they take that step, then God begins to reveal the next pieces of right. the puzzle. It's about trusting Him, trusting Him. I, I, I can recall um, I was about 15 and my mother went to the Holy Land and she brought back a gift. I was upset about that gift. It was a little teeny tiny box and it had one mustard seed in it. <laughs> I was so upset. You couldn't have found something else to give me and bring back from the Holy Land. But you know what? Almost 50 years later, the, that was one of the best gifts she could have gotten me because I broke open that mustard seed and inside were thousands of grains. And Jesus said, wow. all you need wow. is the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. So that mm. gift to me has helped me to walk out in faith. Just a little bit of faith can make all the difference in the world. Well, and, and the Bible calls it a walk with God. But what is a walk? But it's made up of us taking steps. And sometimes it's just one step at a time. Tom? It, it really is. And, and what's the step that Jesus would have you take today? Well, we've made a pretty easy step. You can call the prayer line, get a hold of a prayer partner. I always tell the prayer partners, this is easy ministry. You just have to say hello. There's somebody on the other end of the line that already knows what they're calling for. But it's easy for you too. You can just call and get a hold of a prayer partner. I love the prayer partners because they only come here. They get in their car, they drive here. The only one reason they do that is because they want to pray with you. There's no other reason for them to be here except to pray with you. And so they're there and they're prayed up and they're believing and they've got scriptures they want to share with you and they want, they have prayers they want to pray with you. And again, usher you into the throne room, into the presence of God. That's where the, the answer is. The answer is not in do a little bit more of this, do a little bit more of that. Sometimes those things are helpful, but the real answer is when we go into the throne room and say, God, I'm desperate. I can't do this on my, on my own. I've tried on my own. Some of you, I'm talking to someone right now, you've tried and tried and tried. Maybe it's an addiction, maybe it's a physical problem, whatever it is, maybe it's a relational problem, but you've tried and tried and tried as many different pieces of advice as people have given you, and a lot of them are good, good advice, but it hasn't made the difference. Right now is the time for you to hit the floor and say, I am desperate, Lord. I need you to move. And, 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 and when you do that, God says, okay, now you're at the place that I needed you to get. That place of desperation, that place where I can answer. Well, and Pastor Jay, uh, uh, addictions are, are they're, they're strong in a lot of people's lives. Whether it's alcohol, whether it's to nicotine, opioids are so prevalent today. Uh, drugs, heroin, whatever, pornography. Would you talk, I, I do sense in my spirit, there's somebody that's watching that has a chain of addiction on them that God wants to sever and break off of them through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you know, no matter what you're struggling with, Jesus Christ paid it all. You know, when he died on the cross, there wasn't just one person there, there was two there. You are the other person on that cross with him. And that part of you that's struggling, Jesus Christ died for that. 
And I know it's hard because I've worked in the field of addiction for many years, but God wants to break those shackles and chains. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pick up that phone and I want you to call in. You know what? You may want to call in anonymous. Maybe you don't want to give your name. That's fine. But just take that step and say, God, I'm believing you today according to the man of God's word that I'm going to be free from this addiction and this stronghold, whether it's pornography, whether it's alcohol, drugs, even nicotine. You may be struggling with chewing tobacco, whatever it is, Come God on. wants to break that chain today. So pick up that phone, have our prayer partners call that in, and we're going to believe God for a supernatural yes. breakthrough right. to fall off, of, to come onto your life and that those addictions will fall right off of your life. So Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Father, for setting free every single captive, Father God. No matter what the stronghold is, Jesus. Father God, we break it in the name of Jesus, oh God. We plead the blood of Jesus around them and we command Woo. every foul spirit to go yes. in the name of Jesus. Ooh. And we declare whom the Son sets free is Ooh, free yeah. indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, Amen. I sense Amen. the anointing Amen. of the Holy Spirit right now. And it's the anointing that breaks that yoke. Yes. Jesus can Ooh. do yes. for you what you cannot That's do right. for come yourself. On, come on, come on. Just right. receive yes. your freedom now. Come on. But then they got to walk it out. They got to walk it out. You know, Amen. Ed Cole always used to say it's easier to obtain than it is to maintain. It's one thing yeah, yeah, to get yeah. free, then you got to stay free. You got to stay free. And, you know, I just sense that people are receiving that right now. And so why don't you call now? We, we, you, you hit the floor. You prayed with Pastor Jay. Call and say, you know what? I prayed with Pastor Jay, and I believe that I'm set free. And I just want to seal that by, by proclaiming that. We want to hear that. We want to hear about how you're set free. And, and a prayer partner will pray with you. They'll rejoice with you. And, and we, just, we just believe, you know, I, I just sense it as you were praying, Jay. I just sense it how the Lord just loves healed situations, doesn't Amen. he? Amen. Whether it's our physical body that needs to be healed or our relationships or our, our personal, like, uh, the, like we were praying about addictions. He loves that. He loves to heal, Pastor Mario. He loves to see, uh, I bring a person from uh, a place of brokenness and a place of healing. Yes, Amen. yes. And there are those of you who have gone, come to God and about those addictions and you've gone back. But there's an addiction that has accompanied your physical uh, uh, addiction, and that is a psychological addiction. Something got you there where you began to use drugs or, or those opioids, whatever it is, to pacify that pain. God wants to break both of those yokes, both of those yokes, so that you don't go back to it changing your behaviors. Like you said, Pastor Gary, walking it out after the fact. You can't go back to where you were. You can't go back into those environments. You've got to change your people, places, and things, and God will help you do that. He will break that yoke in your life so that they can be free. I hear the chains falling. <laughs> sing, Come on. And you know, for some of you, it's a soul tie. It's a relationship that's not healthy for you. You know, they always say when people get out of prison, if they return back to their old friends, right. sometimes they're going to return back to their old lifestyles. That's why some people stay in bondage because they're not willing to maintain. They're not willing to do those things. So what happens, I've seen it many times, people will get out of prison and they say, I'll never go back to that, I'll never go back to that. The only problem is their mind is still in the chains, even though they've been freed. They've been freed from the penitentiary, but their mind is still in the gutter. And the reality is sometimes God can take you out of Egypt, but the process of sanctification is for, for you to take Egypt out of you. So God wants to renew your mind. So Father, I pray today that not only would they be free, Father God, but Lord, that their minds would be free according to your word. You said, beloved, I wished above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So Lord, we declare their minds to be whole today in the name of Jesus. That not only would they be free, but that their minds would be free today in the name of Jesus. And you know, and somebody called in and they desire to lose weight. And while I was reading this, I was thinking that somebody has an addiction to food. Your addiction is food. Whenever things go wrong, you run to the cupboard. 
You run to grab a pizza, you run to grab a sub, and your weight fluctuates up and down. God wants you to come to him today. Let him be the one that satisfies, and that weight is going to fall off of your life. Well, there's things that just control us. We, we, we turn our lives over to things. And, and usually there's a, a something deep inside that we're just medicating. There's a hurt, there's a pain. And you know what? God wants to heal you from the, the, uh, the things you're doing, but he wants to heal you down deep inside there. He's got, he's got a healing balm that he can put on there, an ointment that he can put on there that can change that thing inside of you that's causing the pain. Uh, Jesus died for those things. He took the, the weight of those things. Many times it's from relationships and things when we were young and, and hurts that we experienced when we were young and that they've just sort of hung on to us. Don't you want to be free of those things today? You can be free of those things today because God has the answer for you. So th don't, in fact, Let's, let's pray right now about that. Let's pray about those things yes. that have been those hurts. So in the name of Jesus, we just come against every hurt for, the, for our friends that are watching today, Father. In Jesus' name, we believe, Lord God, that you want to heal down deep inside yes. those things that we have buried ourselves and we don't yes. want to think about them and we don't want to bring them back up because they're too painful and, and it's caused so much destruction in our lives and in our habits. Today is a day of freedom from all of that freedom from the actions, but freedom from the pain. God was there with yes. you in the pain and he is forgiving and he is, he is changing and he is healing now in Jesus name. Amen. And you know, the battleground for Satan is your mind. You got to get the victory in your thought life. Amen. That's why Paul says, don't be conformed to this world, be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. You got to take every negative thought captive. You got to take it captive and you got to replace it with healthy thoughts, positive thoughts. That's why you got to read the word. I like to read it out loud because faith comes by hearing. And sometimes you got to get the word in your mind to replace those old negative fearful thoughts. And we have the power, but it's spiritual. These are not weapons, natural weapons. These are, the word of God is powerful. It will slice Come on. through right. everything that opposes you if you'll just have faith. That's well, right. I think it's so important. You know, we, we talk about the Word of God, the Bible, and we, we, we reference it and we say it's important. But how is it important in our life? Like Pastor Gary said, we need to be renewed by the washing of the water of the Word, right? And it's through reading the, the Scriptures. It's through, you know what, meditating on the Scriptures. Meditating is not a bad word. It's just thinking about and letting the Lord speak to you through that. It's about memor memorizing portions of Scripture. It's about reading big portions of Scripture and letting that, that go over and over in your mind and then just reading a small portion and thinking about it. Let, let the Lord do something in you. And also studying the Word of God. That's not a bad word, study. It's something that we need to do so we know what's in there and know what God wants to do in our lives. You know what's amazing about the story of Lazarus is we're all talking and come back to my mind. You know, Jesus called him out of the grave, but he still needed to be loosed. That's right. You know, it's amazing. He still needed, he was free from the grave, but you know what's amazing? They said, don't go in there because he's been dead four days and by now he's stinking. So he still smelled like where he came out of, even though everything in his life was new. And that's where some of you are. God has brought you out of things, but you're still stinketh. And God's saying today, he wants to loose you and he wants to let you go. And you say, what do you mean? I don't smell bad in the natural. The mind, the stinking thinking of your life will take you back to the very thing that God called you out of. And so today, there's an anointing. I believe there's something that are even watching that God's gonna give you a greater passion for the word of God like never before. And as you read it, it's gonna come alive in your spirit because God's gonna give you fresh rhema from heaven in order to renew your mind and take you to the next dimension that God's uh, called uh, you to I think be. about this, the, 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 this, the word of God is so important, Jay. That, that it's not like in, in just one quick prayer. Sometimes that is, that, that is what it takes, but that's usually a beginning yeah. that then we go on to, that God begins to build new foundations of the, of the proper way to think. And it's found in his word more than any other place. Amen, yeah. amen, yes it is. And, and there's some, someone that's watching and maybe a lot of this is new to you. Maybe you're, this isn't 
you know, topics that maybe you're real comfortable with. Maybe it's been years since you've darkened the door of a church. But somehow you have a drawing to what you're hearing today. And you know, we're talking about miracles and healing. The greatest healing and miracle anyone could ever receive is knowing that our sins are forgiven, knowing that we've asked Jesus Christ into our heart and life, knowing we have peace with God, peace with Him, and knowing that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Listen, this life is soon going to be passed for all of us. We're all going to stand before the Lord. It's not what you know. It's who you know that's going to get you into heaven. And if you've never invited Christ to come into your heart as the Savior and the Lord of your life. Tom, I often think of Norma Bixler, the founder. You know, one of the main desires of her when the Lord used her to raise up this station with her husband, Russell. She said, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Well, and, and I remember her saying that uh, so often, and we even had a little piece we put together about that. And what, what did she say when the Lord spoke that to her, Pastor Gary? She saw in their eyes uh, when she was downtown one time that they needed something. They needed something. Their eyes looked, looked like they were just staring far off. What she knew they needed is they needed Jesus. So we want you to take this time right now and we want you to come to the Lord. You say, how do I do that? It's very simple. You just come to him and you say, God, I need you in my life. I'm yes. desperate. We talked earlier about being desperate enough to hit the floor. Well, this is being desperate enough to say, God, I cannot do this on my own. I need you to come into my life right now as Savior and Lord. So why don't we pray and invite Christ into our life? Uh, if, if you've never done this or it's been a long time and you've been far from God, if you've done it, you don't need to pray again. It's all right to pray. But the important thing is that you've done it. You've opened that door to your life. So we're going to pray and we're going to just, just, you can just repeat after, after me. I'll just lead you in this prayer. It'll just be a starting point. You're going to pray a lot more in your life. But I just want to lead you in this prayer of, of opening the door. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I know that Jesus died for my sins. I know that Jesus, that Jesus died, died for, for my sins. sins. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Lord, Lord I, ask I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I turn away from my old life. I turn away from my old life. And I come to you. And I come to you now. Please forgive me, Father. Please forgive me, Father. And come into my life. Come into my life. As Savior and Lord. As Savior and Lord. Through the power of Jesus. Through the power of Jesus. And his death on the cross. And his death on the cross. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you invited Christ into your life right now, he's come in. Call the prayer partner and say, I prayed with Tom. I prayed on, on, on television with Tom to invite Jesus into my life. We have some literature we want to send you to get you started in this new life in Christ. If you've rededicated your life to the Lord, you've been away from God, and now you've come back, call also and say, you know what? I've been away from the Lord. I've returned, and I want to get a solid foundation. We want to uh, just talk to you today and send you some information about that as well. And, and, and if you have a Bible, find the book of John or turn to the New Testament. Just start to read a little bit every day. Get the word in your heart. And then if you're not in church, some of you have drifted out of church. You've fallen away. Why don't you come back home? Why don't you find a church? that you can plant yourself. We all need fed and we all need fellowship. Amen. You know, I was thinking of something, you know, I'm so glad that we take the time to win people to the Lord. You know, I think about all the tragedies of school shootings. You know, a lot of people never talk about, we hear about their faces and their names, but we never hear whether or not where they spend eternity. And I'm so glad that you prayed that prayer because you know, no matter what happens in your life,
you're for sure as heaven as if you were already there. Amen, amen. Well, it's, it's the thing we exist for more than any other is to introduce people amen. to Jesus. Right now, we wanna take time to uh, share communion with you. So if you've got your juice and your bread, Pastor Gary's gonna lead us in, in a, a time of communion, a time of remembrance of our Lord. And the Bible says before we receive and partake of these elements, we need to examine yes. our own hearts. And Jesus said that we need to forgive others before we could ever be forgiven ourselves. So if you're holding ought, if you're holding a grudge, if you're holding unforgiveness, an offense. The Bible says an offense is a trap. If you're holding an offense against anyone, just forgive them. Just say, I forgive. and Just say their name. Say their name. I forgive. And then as you release unforgiveness toward them, now Christ can cleanse and forgive us. So take your cracker, your bread, whatever you have, and take and eat of it now. And just sense the healing virtue of Jesus Christ going through your body right now. Be healed. Some of you are sensing a warmth. Some of you are sensing a, a quickening, a shaking. That's the Lord. That's the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid. Just receive your healing right now. Some of you, that chain of addiction is falling off right now. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Some of you, God's healing your heart. Your heart's been hurt. You've been disappointed. You've been, you've experienced a brokenness in your heart. Let the Lord heal you. And then take your cup and take a drink of it now and be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. Praise the Lord. We want to pray for your requests. Um, many people have called in. We get many thousands and tens of thousands of calls every year here from people just like you that need to see God move. So we're going to just spread these out here on our, on our uh, table here like, uh, as if it was an altar. And we're just going to pray. So let's, let's uh, lift this up to the Lord. Father, each person that's represented on these yellow papers is a, is a person you. that you love, a person for whom Christ died, a person yes, that yes, yes, is yes. desperate to see something happen in their life. And Lord, we pray for healing for them. Lord, whether it's physical healing or spiritual healing, whether it's a deliverance, Lord, or a relationship that needs to be healed, whether it's their finances that need to be changed, Lord, we ask, Father, that you would come in might and in power, Lord, that you would come and change the situation. Lord, when you come, things are never the same again, Lord. So we ask in Jesus' name that you would come and touch these lives, each and every one. And Father, for those who have come to you today, we pray you establish them in the faith and keep them strong in you. Keep them close to you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, Pastor Myra, you're going to lead us in worship, so we're going to release you to uh, get ready for that. But we have seen God do some mighty things today, haven't we? We have, you know, there's such a sweet anointing here right now, you know, and uh, some of you say, why would God do all of this? He just simply wants you to know that he loves you. He heals you, he delivers. And some of you, you know, you were talking about the person who just felt the quickening and the presence of God of their life. You say, why is that happening to me? He just wants intimacy with you. He wants to be close to you. And so just welcome his presence. Even after the show goes off the air, you can continue to keep practicing the presence of God because the presence of the Lord never has to cease. You know, the Bible says, he delivers you because he delights in you. Amen. I like that. He loves you. Amen. God 
loves you. If you, we covered a lot of ground today. But if you, if you get nothing else out of this program today, just take this one thing. Amen. God loves yes, he does. you. you. You know, it, you, you may not know this. We don't really know what's going to happen in this show. You know, that's, that's kind of unusual for television. You know, every, every moment's usually planned. We usually know this is going to happen. This is going to We just have this big space where we say, God, you got to show up in here or we're just going to be sitting here with nothing to say. And, and he shows We've up. We've never had that problem. Had that problem. <laughs> oh, no. he, but he shows up every time, doesn't he? he? And he leads us in ways that we we don't expect. And you know, what's so exciting about that is when he leads us in those ways, what he's doing is he's calling out things in your life, things that are uh, needed to, to that, you, that, you, that he knows all about, that you know all about, we don't know anything about, but he begins to uh, call those things out. He begins to change the, the atmosphere in your home as he changes the atmosphere in the studio. And he begins to do some things that, that are, are powerful and life-changing and miraculous. And it's so exciting. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for uh, sharing the word with us today and sharing what God uh, wants to do in our, our dear viewers' lives. And, and you know, as, uh, just in a moment, we're going to worship the Lord. You know, whatever we've prayed about today, just as you begin to worship with Pastor Myra, just release that to God completely. You know, we've already prayed about it. We've already called, uh, you know, the, 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 the scriptures uh, into, into account, uh, into that situation. But right now, just release it to God. The, the Pastor Myra, again, she's going to lead us. The song is called, Oh, Give Thanks. And when you pray now and when you praise, you're giving thanks to the Lord for what he's doing. Let's just thank him for what he's done already and what he's getting ready to do. Interested in a product featured on today's Real Life? Now you can find all of your favorite books, CDs, DVDs, gifts, and more. All in one place at ctvn.org slash shop. Real Answers for Real Life, now delivered right to your mailbox. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. Here at Cornerstone, we want you to be in the loop. Call now for Real Life Today, the free newsletter that will keep you up to date on all of our programs and specials. It has encouraging articles and behind the scenes stories. Real Life Today, the little newsletter that packs a giant punch. Call now.
Firestone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.